Hey guys, alright? Welcome to our channel. On the planet Krypton, a woman named Lara is giving birth naturally after a long time. And her husband named Jorel is assisting her in the delivery. Soon, the baby is born, a boy on a distant planet with unparalleled technology. Jorel, seeing the critical state of the planet, speaks to the Council of Krypton, stating that they no longer have time to exist. One of the counselors says that it was necessary to extract resources from the core, despite Jorel's repeated warnings that it would not be good for all of them, and that they should have gone to other planets. The planet is now in its final stage, and there is no more time to evacuate. Jorel asks them to give him the Codex, or he would ensure the survival of their species. Suddenly, the council is interrupted by a group of soldiers, led by General Zod, who plans to overthrow the council and imprison them. However, being old friends, Jor-El does not approve of Zod's vengeful actions and refuses to be a part of it, so they take him away. As he leaves the chamber, a technology that only serves Jor-El helps him by blinding the soldier's vision, allowing him to escape. He heads for the exit, witnessing a war between Zod's side and the council members. Wanting to leave and go home, he calls his pet, Haraka, a flying creature. Jor-El goes to a submerged chamber and soon reaches the Codex, a skull that contains the DNA of their species. As he exits, he is surrounded by a soldier from Zod's group who demands the Codex, but Jor-El refuses to hand it over and is attacked. However, he is saved when his creature comes to his rescue, managing to elude the ships even after being hit, and eventually reaching Jor-El's house. While looking at the destination where they will send their son to save his life and ensure the survival of Krypton's people, Lara wonders what they will do to him on the new planet. But with confidence, Jor-El says that they won't be able to do anything against him because the little one will be seen as a god to them, invulnerable. After bidding a farewell in great sadness, Jor-El prepares his son, and the codex is transferred to the little boy. Jor-El also creates a kind of file that connects to the ship. At that moment, Zod, along with other soldiers, approaches, and Jor-El puts on his suit to wait for them. Zod forcefully enters Jor-El's house, and they confront each other, but Jor-El plans to protect his family and his plan at all costs. When Zod asks what he did with the Codex, Jor-El reveals that they had a child naturally after centuries. Understanding Jor-El's plan, Zod orders the destruction of the escaped ship, but Jor-El fights back, hoping to buy time for his son to take flight safely. Despite Zod's opposition, Jor-El emerges victorious. Knowing that it was necessary to do so to save her son, Lara activates the launch. Enraged by this, Zod kills Jor-El with a blade. Zod demands to know where the boy went, and Lara tells him that her son's name is Kal-El and that Zod cannot reach him. Furious, Zod orders the destruction of the ship, but they are intercepted by Krypton's guard, who surrounds and subdues them. In the council, Zod and his companions are sentenced to be imprisoned for hundreds of years in a prison within a ravaged dimension. Not satisfied with this, Zod admits that Jor-El was right about the council being fools and tells Lara that one day he will find Kal-El and take back what he wants. Soon, they are frozen and sent out of the planet through an artificial dimensional portal. Days later, it is the end for Krypton. Lara awaits the destruction of the planet, realizing that Jor-El was right. With nothing left to do, this is the end for all Kryptonians as their planet collapses and violently explodes. Thousands of light years away, in the solar system, Kal-El's ship emerges from a rift in space and heads towards Earth, eventually crashing into a farm. Years later, we see a fishing vessel called to assist in a rescue operation on an oil platform engulfed in flames. As they approach and find no other options, the captain requests binoculars but the man who was supposed to bring them is no longer there, and we see him now climbing up the platform. Some men were trapped inside one of the cabins, awaiting death, but suddenly the door is ripped off as if it were made of cardboard by Kal-El, now known as Clark, with superhuman strength and fire resistance. They are then taken to the helipad and begin to board the helicopter, but soon a large portion of the platform starts to collapse. To save the people, Clark jumps and holds onto the enormous structure with extreme strength, giving the helicopter enough time to take off safely. However, Clark falls and sinks with the platform. Unconscious in the sea, he remembers a little bit of his childhood when he was a boy and discovered his abilities. He was terrified, hearing everything around him and seeing the insides of people's bodies. Frightened, he leaves the room and hides in the pantry. The teacher tries to enter, but the doorknob gets extremely hot from his heat vision, preventing her from touching it. 
However, soon his adoptive mother, Martha, arrives and talks to him, convincing him to come out. Years later, on a school bus, he and his classmates are on a field trip when suddenly the tire bursts on a bridge, causing the bus to fall into the river. Seeing that his classmates would drown, Clark decides to leave the bus to do something. Soon the bus starts rising from the river, saving and surprising those who see it. At home, his adoptive father, Jonathan, talks to Clark about him revealing his powers, but Clark says he couldn't let them die. Jonathan tells him that it's not good, regardless of the circumstances, to show what Clark truly is because once the world finds out, everything will change, and it could be a bad change. Clark questions what he is, so Jonathan decides to show him something unknown to him in the basement of the stable, a spaceship, the same one Clark came in. He also gives him the medal that came with Clark, which he doesn't know the purpose of. Jonathan also tells Clark that he is not from Earth but will always be his son, but Clark needs to know that he has a father who sent him to Earth for a reason, and he must discover it himself. Returning to Clark as an adult, he now works at a diner where a few Canadian soldiers are present, discussing a discovery. At one point, the waitress is harassed by a jerk, and Clark goes to help her. However, the man thinks he's tough and confronts Clark. Not wanting to harm him with his powers, Clark tries to be gentle, but the jerk is foolish, and after pouring a drink on him, he tries to push Clark, who doesn't budge at all, as if he were a concrete wall. Then Clark takes a deep breath and leaves the scene. But after the lunatic leaves, he sees something quite unusual, his truck completely destroyed with several enormous tree trunks. Clark, thinking about what the soldiers were talking about regarding a strange discovery, decides to work for research support companies. Through this, he meets Lois Lane, a reporter from the Daily Planet, who came to document the discovery. They go to the military camp where they meet Colonel Hardy and Dr. Hamilton. They take her to see what they have discovered beneath the ice, an object that is over 300 meters long, covered with a thick layer of ice that strangely dates back over 20,000 years. Intrigued by the discovery, Lois decides to take some photos of the site. While photographing from a distance, she sees Clark heading towards somewhere, so she decides to follow him. Further ahead, she sees an entrance that appears to have been recently drilled. It is revealed that Clark used his heat vision to create the hole. Upon reaching the other side, he finds a Kryptonian spacecraft. Clark enters and encounters technology that recognizes the key he carries as a necklace. However, a technological guard activates from behind him and tries to grab him. Clark manages to connect the key, causing the defense system to change. Soon, a voice echoes and the image of Jor-El appears in front of Clark, who follows him to another part of the ship. Lois manages to enter and encounters the floating technology. She takes a photo, which triggers the object to attack her. Clark hears Lois in pain and rushes to her aid. He grabs the robotic technology with his strength and destroys it. Approaching Lois, he realizes she is injured and needs to cauterize the wound to prevent her from dying. He uses his heat vision for this purpose, and Lois faints. Moments later, the soldiers notice a significant tremor and, going outside the tents, they realize it's an alien spacecraft that quickly departs the area. The next morning, a helicopter rescues Lois, and days later, we see her making a documentary about the incident. She goes to speak with her boss, a man named Perry. He is not fond of the story and says he won't publish anything about an alien living among them. So, she approaches a man and asks him to publish it on his website so that Clark will know that Lois remembers him. Back on the ship, Clark encounters his father, or rather a hologram of him, through the key he connected. Clark asks about himself, and Jor-El explains where he came from. He says that Krypton was a hostile planet, and for a long time, their people sent exploration groups throughout the universe. The ship they are in was one of those sent to Earth thousands of years ago, and they used large ships to terraform planets according to their needs. However, things took a turn for the worse when they wanted to extract resources from their own planet, causing instability in the core. Jor-El reveals that General Zod attempted a coup, but it was too late, and destruction followed. He tells Clark that he is not alone because he is the son of two worlds, embodying the best of each, and now his people are the people of Earth. Clark can be the hope for a better world, guiding humanity to avoid the same mistakes the Kryptonians made. Jor-El explains the symbol of hope of his family and shows Clark his suit, specifically designed for him to wear at the right time. Jor-El also explains that Clark's body absorbs the radiation from the Earth's sun, granting him unparalleled strength and resilience. It is now up to him to test his strength and push his limits. 
He attempts a new ability but lacking any flying experience, he crashes into a mountain. However, he quickly regains focus, leaps with great force, and flies with precision and incredible speed over various landscapes, even reaching beyond the Earth's atmosphere. Meanwhile, Lois begins researching Clark's phantom life to protect his secret. She visits every place he interacted with and eventually encounters a man named Pete, a resident of Smallville and Clark's former classmate. Pete tells her where Clark lived. Lois then goes to Martha's house and wishes to talk about Clark. Martha takes her to see Jonathan's grave, and moments later, Lois senses Clark's presence. When she turns around, she sees him, and they have a conversation. She questions Clark about why he doesn't reveal himself to the world. He explains that it's because his father sacrificed himself to keep his secret and prevent the world from judging him for what he is. Clark has a flashback to the day he lost his father. They are trapped on a road surrounded by a massive tornado, and as Clark helps some people, he goes back to get their frightened dog. However, he gets injured and is unable to run, so Clark tries to go back to save him. His father stops him and chooses to die instead of having his son reveal his powers to the world. Clark tells Lois that he remains in secret because he believed in what his father said, that he would be recognized by the world only when the time was right. Touched by his words, Lois goes to her workplace and tells Perry that the story was a lie. After a long time, Clark decides to reappear to his mother and return home. Meanwhile, at the Pentagon, General Swanick is called by Hamilton, who shows him that they have discovered a ship in lunar orbit. Later that night, Lois sees people anxiously gathering around the television, which shows a large ship approaching Earth. Clark and his mother also witness the same sight from their farm. Moments later, communication is established, and it is revealed that the one in the ship is General Zod, who declares that Earth is not alone and demands that they hand over one of their own or face destruction. The next day, the newspaper reports that Lois knows who the visitor is. Perry calls her and questions her about it, but before she can explain, she realizes that government agents are already there to take her into custody. Lois tries to elude the agents, but she is surrounded and taken away. Determined to discuss his surrender to the government, Clark goes to the military base and is surrounded by soldiers. He requests to speak with Lois before surrendering. He is taken into custody and talks with her in a room, but their conversation is interrupted by Hamilton, who is concerned about what Clark may have brought from his planet. The general is primarily concerned about national security, but Clark stands up, easily breaking the handcuffs, and states that he is not a threat. However, the general has received orders to hand him over to Zod. Clark accepts and moments later bids farewell to Lois. Shortly after, the Kryptonian ship arrives, and Zod's subcommander, Farah, introduces herself. Farah approaches the Earth generals and announces that Zod wants Lois to come with her. Party objects, stating that it was not part of the agreement, but Lois decides to go on her own. They are taken, and during the journey, Clark hands Lois his command key. Later, Lois is given a respirator due to the different atmosphere. When they arrive on the large ship, Zod introduces himself. Meanwhile, Clark starts feeling unwell due to the unfamiliar atmosphere compared to what he had adapted to on Earth, and he faints. Clark enters a dreamlike state in which Zod speaks to him, revealing what happened to them. They were imprisoned and left to die in the Phantom Zone, but after the planet's destruction, they were released and used the Phantom Drive to enhance their ship, the same system that brought Clark to Earth. They continued to teleport to different places in the universe, exploring regions that their people had attempted to explore before, only to find death. However, they salvaged equipment and, most importantly, a planet-changing machine. Zod explains that for 33 years they searched many places until one day their scout ship intercepted a distress signal from Earth, triggered by Clark when he activated the Kryptonian scout ship. Zod continues to discuss his plans for Earth and reveals that all of Krypton's genetic code was stored in the pod that brought Kal-El to Earth. He explains that his father's purpose was for Krypton to be reborn on another planet, and that planet is Earth. Clark wakes up and finds himself strapped to a table, where Jax, Zod's servant, tries to extract information from him, stating that he is weak compared to a Kryptonian. Lois is taken to a chamber where she sees a system that receives the command key given to her by Clark. Lois inserts the key, and Jor-El's hologram appears. He explains that he designed the ship and can modify it as he wishes. He adjusts the ship's atmosphere and helps Lois escape from Zod's soldiers, guiding her on where to shoot. Clark begins to regain his strength due to the Earth-like atmosphere and easily breaks free, frightening Jax. 
Jor-El's hologram leads Lois to an escape pod and tells her that the phantom drives are crucial to stopping Zod. Unfortunately, a soldier arrives and tries to stop Lois, who pushes her away, but the pod gets damaged. Clark, guided by his father, breaks a part of the ship and sees that Lois is in danger. He decides to save her and manages to do so just in time. He is relieved, but soon senses that something is wrong near his home and his mother. It turns out that Zod is searching for the Codex and threatening Martha. Farah goes to the barn, finds the escape pod, and opens it, only to discover that the Codex is not there. Enraged, Zod attempts to intimidate Martha and threatens her. However, Clark arrives quickly and takes Zod with him, throwing him against everything in his path. He is furious because Zod harmed his mother. After explosions that cause no harm to them, General Zod's helmet is shattered, causing him to experience the same painful sensations that Clark did as a child. Zod's soldiers arrive and assist him by firing an energy blast at Clark. After leaving the scene, Zod leaves Farah and another servant to fight Clark. Meanwhile, the American soldiers are authorized to use lethal ammunition against the alien beings. They attempt to do so and initially succeed, but in their second attempt, they are caught off guard by an attack that destroys a jet. Fortunately, the other Clark intercepts the attack. Clark confronts Farah, who proves to be skilled and very strong. With no battle experience, Clark is humiliated by the two Kryptonians. Hardy and his soldiers prepare to intervene, while Clark, surrounded, uses his heat vision to evade the combined attacks of the enemies. Hardy orders an attack on the three aliens, but one of them strikes the helicopter, causing Hardy to crash. The soldiers try to help, but Farah easily defeats them with her strength and speed. She then confronts Hardy, who tries to fight back, but knows it will be futile. Fortunately, Clark arrives and manages to hit Farah with a blow that damages her helmet. Clark is caught off guard by an attack, and then Farah is rescued and taken away from there. Clark goes to check on his mother, and soon Lois arrives and says she knows how to stop Zod. On the ship, Jax tells Zod that the Codex is linked to Clark's body in every cell. Zod discovers that he doesn't need Clark to be alive in order to extract the Codex from him. He activates the planetary engine, the instrument of planetary destruction. Moments later, a part of the ship positions itself in the southern hemisphere, while the other hovers above the city of Metropolis. Zod activates the phantom drive and connects the two parts of the planetary engine, causing them to drill into the ground with great force, causing panic and widespread destruction. Hamilton and the other soldiers observe what is happening, and the communication between the two ships raises concerns, as it means that the Earth will soon be transformed, resulting in the extinction of the human race. Clark and Lois arrive at the military base with a plan. They need to collide the ship that brought Clark to Earth, which uses the same spacefolding technology, with Zod's ship. Clark will then destroy the ship on the other side of the Earth. General Zod, not wanting to be left behind, returns to Earth and adapts to his powers. He then goes to the ship where the Genesis Chamber is located and activates it. Jor-El tries to stop him, but Zod uses the command key to override his authority. Clark reaches the planetary engine, which activates its defense mechanism and attacks Clark, trapping him with something resembling living chains. However, he manages to break free. Undeterred, they grab him and throw him inside the active zone of the planetary engine. Zod, unwilling to coexist with humans, disagrees with Jor-El and destroys his artificial intelligence before taking the ship. Perry and his employees try to leave the building, but a woman gets trapped. Perry decides to help her and pulls her out of the rubble before the worst happens. Clark rises and gives it his all as he launches himself into the planetary engine, destroying it and severing the connection with its other part. Perry and the others are saved as a result. Hardy, Lois, and other soldiers prepare to launch the capsule containing the other part of the ship. The colonel authorizes the launch, but Lois fails to connect the command key. Seeing that the humans are planning something, Farah decides to intervene and attack. Hamilton tries to see what happened to the key, but they are surprised by Zod, who destroys the fighter jets and plans to destroy the plane. Fortunately, Clark hits him, and Zod asks him not to destroy the ship. Clark states that Krypton already had its chance and proceeds to destroy the ship, causing it to crash. Hamilton manages to align Clark's ship and connect the key, but Farah arrives and interferes. Her suit protects her from their attacks, and she easily fights and kills the soldiers. Hardy goes to the control of the ship, followed by Farah. 
Meanwhile, Hamilton activates the command key and starts the engine of Clark's ship, releasing a massive amount of energy. Determined to sacrifice himself, Hardy launches the ship against the planetary engine, and Lois loses her balance and falls. The collision of the two folding drives becomes inevitable, and a black hole starts sucking everything in its vicinity. Clark sees Lois falling and manages to catch her. With effort, he escapes the gravitational force of the black hole, which soon disappears. Moments later, feeling relieved and thinking it's all over, Clark realizes that someone is still with them. He soon discovers that it's General Zod, who survived the fall. Zod expresses sadness for the end of his people but is filled with rage as he attacks Clark. They engage in a fierce fight, colliding against buildings. Zod discovers his heat vision and quickly gains control over it. In the midst of the city, they cause massive explosions. Zod and Clark continue their battle, exchanging punches and inevitably destroying everything around them. Zod attacks Clark with an iron bar, but Clark melts it. However, Zod persists in his assault. He tells Clark that he was trained from a young age to sharpen his senses, demonstrating his ability to fly. They continue to confront each other, and Zod takes Clark out of the atmosphere, throwing a satellite at him. They return, and Clark throws Zod inside a museum where people are seeking refuge. Clark manages to put Zod in a chokehold. Seeing that he has no other options, Zod decides to kill the people in the museum with his heat vision. Clark pleads with him to stop, but Zod refuses. With no other choice, Clark breaks Zod's neck, killing him on the spot. Lois arrives at the scene and witnesses it all. Clark despairs over what he has done, perhaps lamenting the end of his own species. Days later, Clark intercepts General Swanick and tells him to stop trying to uncover his true identity. He reassures Swanick that he is there to help and then leaves. Sometime later, Clark secures a job at the Daily Planet and is warmly welcomed by everyone, including Lois, who recognizes him but plays along with Clark's disguise. He goes to meet his mother at his father's grave, and she expresses happiness for the man Clark has become. Clark reminisces about his happy memories with his adoptive father, who raised him to be the man he is today, known to all as Superman.